Deborah Dix is dead. The vein was never opened by the needle's little head. The carbon dioxide did not ratchet up any debt in the blood. No part was shaved. The stomach was not plumed by syringe, nor was there tubing for urine, for spit. The pulse was well contained in the bed of the neck. With the naked eye, no one could detect it. The sun did not come up in rooms walked by those who each day heard the bird's first call. The blankets remained cool, the skin not sweated, nor marked by unchanged linen. A gown was never tied about the shoulders. There were no visitors, no vase of circus roses, no water poured from the picture, nor ice given on the worst nights in the usual way of things. Nevertheless, a teacup slipped its hook. It was not meant to be painless. In the sink, a regular shattering, though it was not without the sound of barking dogs, and still the water boiled. All it meant was that a woman had opened the window from her fitted sleep as we stood watching a crow take to the air haphazardly, just then sprung from well below the earth. waking nights, for the eyes that dream drove open to the serrated flame of roof beamed by river. So named by the always morning-faced nurses, she saw cellared in her fingertip counting, screws and dowels holding headboard to needled out nocturne, bed rail wrapped by nail, glass under rain, paid for by the weatherman's false call, and the fair weather never in snow approached by overnight train of a whistle half aired, half unroused in the pipe. So named for an inability to wake with the others, for the obvious rhyme, for the slipped hunter, the sharp edged use of the trowel, and because she could see what was coming. Even at night she could see the factory's horizoning plumage, an outbuilding abbreviated by landslide its howl hung lengthwise from the last rafter. And I'll finish up with a couple of love poems, um, but none of my poems seem to really be love poems. Uh, they're <laughs> mostly longing and misery poems. Um, I'm hoping to sort of correct this the next time around. I hope to have many love poems and happy, happy love poems. Uh, this is a letters poem, so it's in three sections, um, and each section takes place in a location in Morocco. So there's Marrakesh, and then Essaouira, which is a, a seaside town on the seaside coast, and then Chefchaouen, which is um, a northern mountainous town, which is really beautiful and completely painted blue. Everywhere in the town is blue. Um, Marrakesh. The light goes on, goes off in the courtyard below the window. Someone is walking in a long coat. Someone is loved beyond reason, someone not at all. Somewhere there's a beach, a moon rising in every stone eye. I dream of rice paper and a closet of pressed clothes. I must intend to stay all night writing this letter to you, familiar and beloved. Esauera. I lie all night in Eloard's fiberglass apps. La mer n'a plus de lumière et, comme au temps ancien, ask me to return to our bed, or instead come to the dock, fearless, handkerchiefless, waving to no one. Chuck Chowan. It has been quiet among the clay and the wire hairline streets. The mosque is lit all night, though the fountain stops. No one says why. The valley is filled with ornamental trees, turning flower instead of fruit. The valley is further than it seems. In a familiar city, where the ground
grass and the gravel tick 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 on the pavement the morning sprinters or on the mountain where there are no trees or just one grown light and thin out of the rock there might as well be music there might as well be a certain resting sky and a picnic to which we are invited there is plenty of room the flower boxes are full of ice at home where the loss has always already happened and the birds have only just come back. The trouble and clench of your fingers are irretrievable in the room's studio bright light. There are onlookers, white dress left over a door, day moon, hole in the sky's blue body armor. How small the road seems in comparison, the lean starts of red buds spiked up the drive. And this is a poem for a student of mine um, who just came back from Iraq uh, maybe a year ago. So it's called Poem for Sebastian, Stanford, November 2011. I have a student one semester back from war. I see him through the union window shooting pool. He's meant to be in class, mine. I myself am late. And here he's starting another game alone. He's racking up the balls. Today, I'd rather play around with him, have a beer, break embarrassingly badly, and lose before the eight ball shot, than talk through Elliot and Pound and where the line of authorship is drawn. I can't go in, can't join him, nor could I shame him in my teacher voice. Imagine this, he'd say, aren't you fucking sick of writing too, aren't you? And then I'd have to say what's true. Most, day these, most days these poems are what I have. He's pretty good with a cue. Red ball, blue, roll smoothly toward their pockets. My hands are cold. I'm new here thinking, it's California. It should be warmer than this. And then I'll finish with another missing poem, uh, which I guess sort of goes with our theme. Miss you. I miss you meteorically, metaphorically. I miss you merrily. Missing you makes me mistake other people on the street for you. Missing you, I miss my train. I miss your train. When missing you, I miss the exit ramp. I miss you, and there's an empty wine glass in my chest, and my chest thinks it's missing its organs. So I miss my heart. I miss the way it feels to have a stomach. I miss you mornings, afternoon, nights. Missing you sucks away the day. Missing you, I miss teach meter, rhyme, how to scan a line. Missing you like there's no tomorrow. There's no tomorrow in which I do not miss you. Missing you makes me sweaty, makes me mad, is maddening. I miss you and miss punctuate, or don't miss missing punctuation altogether. I miss you murderously. I miss you mountainously, metaphorically and actually. I miss you most, minutes before you even leave, I'm missing you. Thank you.